and welcome on to the Snail Trail 4x4 Podcast. If you like going off-roading in Toyotas, wrenching on Toyotas, camping in Toyotas, and maybe even poking a little bit of fun at Toyotas, and of course, hearing about how awesome Jim's month is around Toyotas, then this is the podcast for you. That's right, ladies and germs, my name is Tyler, and joining me on episode 245 of the Snail Trail 4x4 podcast is Mr. Birthday Boy himself, Jimmy. Jimmy, how are you, birthday boy? <laughs> I am doing well, Tyler. Thanks. Uh-huh. I have a, I've got a little bit of a cold um, or allergies. I can't tell which one it is. Uh, I did take a, one of those at-home COVID tests the other day, and I'm, I'm negative, but it's, gotcha. yeah, I don't know what's... The secretary has one, too. She's got a really bad sore throat, mm. um, and she's just been not really coughing, but like she just has a really bad sore throat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the, so. the mini assistants all congested as uh, well. So I don't, something's going around hmm. now that people are seeing each other again. We're all getting yeah. these like basic colds. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. I have her on a, a strict regimen of, uh, hot lemon and honey teas with whiskey. Um, at nighttime. Yes. Yeah. She gets some whiskey in them at night. Maybe I'll, I'll make a hot toddy tonight. That'd, that'd probably be pretty good. Hot toddies with Jim bean honey. Yes. And that chamomile really tea and chamomile tea. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll have to try so that one. Good. <laughs> yeah. Tis the season for hot toddies. Ladies and mm-hmm. gentlemen, um, you want to explain what a hot toddy is for those that might not know. Um, so the way like the ingredients and how to make yeah. them or yeah, right. yeah, the basic rundown. Okay. Yeah. The basic is a, a citrusy, uh, tea with honey and whiskey in it yeah, essentially. Pretty much. Yeah. And then you can use any kind of tea you want. Like I've been having uh, a good time making them with a uh, Jim beam honey and a uh, mint and a lemon tea. Oh, nice. So it comes out minty and lemony and then. Yeah. So we let, we've been doing chamomile tea mm-hmm. with Jim Beam honey, honey okay. and lemons off of our lemon tree in the backyard. Oh, and, perfect. Yeah. And then the honey, I think. So. Yeah. The, the reason why those work so well for like cold congestion um, is the, the citrus in the lemon juice. So I don't know if I mentioned lemon juice. Lemon juice is another big important part of it. Yeah. Um, the citrus from the lemon juice uh, helps to bring down swelling in the throat. Hmm. Okay. And uh, the whiskey, the aroma you get from the whiskey helps open up your sinuses as you're drinking. Um, and then sure, also, it's not just alcohol that it does that. Well, yes, that's the alcohol okay. in the whiskey, but sure. <laughs> it seems yeah. like whiskey goes really well. It's not with, just whiskey. Yes. Okay. Um, but a uh, uh, whiskey just has a, a, a nice aroma to so it. Wouldn't, so wouldn't wouldn't a lemon drop be just as good? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yep. So if you don't want to drink too. a whole drink, then just do a lemon drop. Oh, yeah. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just as long as you're over somewhere. 21. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> Our legal disclaimer for this episode. There you go. Uh, yeah. So, uh, back to off roading, back to the Ooh. snail trail four by four. Um, we are waiting on the last item for the gift boxes. Yes. And unfortunately we have been told that it got delayed once again. Yeah. I got delayed another week. Yeah. That's a, that's for me. That's bad. Um, for everybody else that's bad, but in a way I'm kind of happy cause I haven't made the flyers yet for the inside. So <laughs> perfect. You get to procrastinate more. a little bit longer, <laughs> um, yeah. but we did receive all the boxes in and we uh-huh. I've test fit everything. Cause we actually have a physical one of the last item. So mm-hmm. I was able to make sure that we could lay out the boxes pretty easily. And so, yeah, I think, uh, now that I've got another week, I think I'm going to wait another week uh, <laughs> yeah. to get that done. But, uh-huh. but yes, we are, uh, we actually have the numbers in for uh, Patreon for the next box. So we can actually start our hunt Woo-hoo. and the challenge ourselves to try to have everything ordered before the end of this year. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be no problem. Um, I think that we'll be able to find some fun items in uh, that new catalog I got. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So I mean, we already have a long list of really good (laughs) items that we want to put in there. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of them, well, well, I guess some of them, we just need to figure out if we can get a discount, a big enough discount on them to make it work. Yeah. Uh, I I don't Mm -hmm. know how our patrons would feel about if they got a gift box with one item in it. With just one item? Yeah. Depends on what that item is. Yeah. Well, it'd be a a $60 item or a hundred dollar item, you know, but yeah. What if it was a winch? Yeah, I think I mean, they wouldn't mind. Or like one tire. Yeah, right. 
I ship everybody one tire. <laughs> but even like, uh, you know, like what if it was the pro link that we're giving mm-hmm. away like this month? Uh, oh, you know, it's like if we, cause those are 140 bucks. Yeah. And so if we could get them down to buy 60 something of them yeah. for a hundred bucks and send those out, like it's just one item. I don't, you know, I'm not sure how people would feel about that. That's an interesting question. I don't know. Um, let us know, give us your feedback on that. If you guys do, you, would you feel shorted or, um, if we could find like a really good item, like a pro link yeah. and, and get it all, uh, make the numbers work if you guys would be interested in that or not. So the assistant gets, uh, she, um, she calls them her lady boxes. <laughs> <laughs> what's in the assistant's lady box, Jimmy? <laughs> well, what's really neat about the one that, uh, one of the ones that she, she gets, uh, she gets one every three months. Okay. Um, and it's, t- she gets one once a year and she gets once another different version, a different kind, um, twice a year. Right. Okay. Um, and the one she gets twice a year, they have, they send out a booklet with the box that comes out of what you can order for the next box. Oh, and it has like, you can order one of these, you can order two of these, you can order four of these or whatever. Okay. Uh-huh. And then people can go through and choose what they want. And then they have an app actually. And you go onto the app when it opens up and then you can choose what you want in your box. Yeah. I yeah, thought, my, my meat box does that. Oh really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I thought that'd be cool, but I'm, I'm also on the flip side. I'm like, I don't know if there's that many off-road stuff that much off-road stuff <laughs> you like l- feminine like it's all makeup primarily you gotcha, know yeah. um, foundations and you know mm-hmm. tools or whatever that they use mm-hmm. you know to scrape their face on and put another one on or something uh <laughs> okay you like that <laughs> so I just for some reason i just got a vision of somebody using a flapper disc to take their makeup <laughs> off <laughs> so that just yeah. tells you how my mind works sure it doesn't sound fun <laughs> A wire wheel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think there's just, for some reason, I feel that there's a lot more cheaper things in that industry mm-hmm. than there is in ours. Yeah, we don't have a cheap hobby. No. So it is definitely not uh, inexpensive to be in the off-road hobby. So yeah. yeah. I, I think we could do something like that, but I think we would have to jack the price up like threefold. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not unless we did something like it was purposefully uh, all sorts of outdoor stuff. So right. camping. So well, I, I think you would have to yeah. incorporate incorporate everything. fabrication to wheeling mm-hmm. to camping. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I agree. Uh, so anyways, um, another week on hold for those. Uh, yep, sorry about that. Yep. Sorry, everybody. Um, uh, a fun thing has come up. Speaking about stuff being on hold. Uh, I have a couple of big more fleet orders that are missing off of the coast of Los Angeles somewhere. Oh no. <laughs> they can't, uh, they can't locate they them Can't locate them. What? So yeah, we'll see how that goes, how that plays out. Oh, uh, man, apparently it's on one of the ships that's out in the Harbor and they're not going to, you know, take for me to figure out where my orders are. They're not going to take a little dinghy through the Harbor looking for that one ship that the orders on. They'll kind of look out into the Harbor with, uh, binoculars. binoculars and see, but, um, yeah, the, the ship is supposed to be in Harbor somewhere, but the, my connections at the Harbor don't see it in the Harbor. <laughs> Man, so, that sucks. But there's also like, I don't know, three, 400 ships sitting in the LA Just Harbor right now. There. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so, That's so crazy. I know it's pretty pretty nuts. So, um, so anyways, uh, that's a fun, a fun thing to work through right now. Um, but, uh, let's see what else do we got. We have a giveaway for this month is the pro link. We yep. talked a little bit about it. Uh, what color is that? Jimmy OD green OD green. All it right. is color zero 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 one five dash one two OD green. Nice. That's a, that's a good color. Yeah. Is I that the so. Pantone of it or no? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's just their pin number or whatever they call it. Gotcha. Cause the red is zero 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 five or zero 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 one five dash Oh one red. Nice. <laughs> so they must, cause it ends at six, which is gray. And this one's 12, which is OD green. So I wonder what happened between seven and 11. Um, <laughs> they, they fell off the deep end. Probably they're, they're stuck out in the LA Harbor somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, cool. So we got a, uh, the giveaway, make sure if you want in for a chance to win a pro link that you're uh, signed up on the giveaway tier, uh, by the end of the month here. So November 30th, uh, and we have Thanksgiving coming up. 
We do. So that's going to be a lot of fun for everybody. Hopefully everybody can enjoy that and and enjoy spending some time with your families. We have the Tacoma powered meetup that we do as well on the 20th up on the 20th. Uh, We'll both be out there. Yep. Yep. I'll be out there. Uh, You'll be out there. Yep. Uh, I'm going to, I don't know. I haven't talked to too many other people to see who else is going, but I uh, posted something up on um, my stories on Instagram and Mm -hmm. I had uh, quite a few hands raised to that. There were people were coming out. So nice. Um, I am taking Kermit out there. Ooh. So we'll get into that a little bit more in this episode here. Uh, let's see. What else do we got coming up on the horizon? A fun episode lined up for 250. Oh, definitely. Episode 250. Well, we got a fun episode lined up for 246. Is that the we do? on Monday? Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> we do have a fun episode lined up for 246. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be, uh, that was a lot of fun to record. Uh, we recorded that last week, and we'll get into a little bit of that in this episode as well. Uh, we've got, like I think we mentioned on previous episodes, we've got a bunch of fun episodes already working in and in the works for January. Yes, we do. Um, and uh, uh, we got a little bit of clarification on what we're doing for the giveaway for um, the Gear Wrench King of the Hammers contest. That is true as well. So, what are the details there? Let's see. So, we're going to have 10 winners. Mm hmm. Um, and uh, speaking of this, 10 wieners, 10 winners. Nice. Well, um, I've already, we've received one in already. Oh, we have. Yes. Wow. Um, so I made a spreadsheet and attached you to it and perfect. Um, did all the, the back end stuff that needs to happen. Look at you with the back end. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, uh, the gear wrench <laughs> uh-huh. is having a competition or a contest to, for an ultimate off-road experience down at King of the hammers. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know the exact details, but I'm pretty sure they're going to pay for everything to get you there and house you there and you get to experience some off-roading one way or another mm-hmm. at the event. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be pretty rad. Um, to do so, we've got a, or to figure out how to get entered for that. We'll have a link down below, but more or less you have to go to Home Depot, get to buy one of the kits that they, one of the four kits they have available and a monster and then submit them a picture of your receipt. Mm-hmm. And then that enters you into that. So we're yep. doing that as well. We're, but we've got bonus prizes on our end. Woo-hoo. So you, while, when you enter into the gear wrench one, also send us a picture or of that, um, your receipt as well. Mm-hmm. That'll enter you into ours. And we're, we've got 10 winners that mm-hmm. we'll be able to give something to. Yeah. And let's see, I re- five of them are going to be the, uh, impact screwdrivers, from gear wrench, mm-hmm. which are the ones that have this mechanism on the inside of the handle that when you impact the back of the screwdriver with a blunt object, it will mm-hmm. actually twist. It'll force it to turn a little bit on the inside. Um, oh, that's or, pretty cool. And it'll force it to turn down at the at the end. Yeah. So when you hit it, it actually t- uses spins. the yeah. It actually spins and pushes at the same time. Ah. So to help, hopefully, if you have that stripped out screw, yeah. And I think one of this one of them comes flathead and one of them comes Phillips. So if you have that stripped out screw and you impact it, it'll push in and turn and help you get that screw out. So nice. yeah, so we're gonna have five winners of that, and then we're gonna have five winners of the um in the quarter inch impact bolt biters, which yeah. it's like a an eight eight pack kit of those mm-hmm. or something like mm-hmm. that from a, a very a variety of sizes. They essentially look like nut drivers for your impact, but they're mm-hmm. the bolt biters. Yes. So, um, super, that's going to be a really nice thing to yeah. have. <laughs> I used, I, um, actually I have a set for you and I, I forgot to bring it. Um, mm-hmm. but I used some the other day working on my parents' little Nissan Toyota <laughs> Nissan pickup uh-huh. that they have. That's like their farm vehicle uh-huh. because the handle uh, for the back uh, tailgate broke and, um, to get back on the inside, one of the nuts on the back was totally stripped out. Uh. First, like somebody must have changed it back in the day and screwed it all up. Uh-huh. And so I threw one of those little bolt biter quarter inch drive, uh, extractors on there. Zip. Right Zipped out, it right it came. off with the Makita. Yeah, it worked great. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome to use. And yeah. so, yeah, so we'll have five of those pairs of screwdrivers, and then we'll have five of those eight packs of the bolt biters to give mm-hmm. away. And then there might be something else down the line too. We'll see. Well, we also have. Are you talking about the 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 cute little baby things? Yes. Okay. I was going to talk about those for. Um, 
the, when we did the Easter egg yes, during okay. Corey's episode, the last uh, episode Corey was on, uh, we did a, the Ford Yoda Tyler uh, Easter egg thing. And uh, so a bunch of people emailed in. We got that list together and we f- we got in the little quarter inch drive keychains. Yes, yeah, so we finally <laughs> finally have received them. <laughs> yeah, um, they're adorable. They are they're cute. These cute little things. Um, so we have those. We're going to be sending those out here by the end of the month. Um, so watch for those to come uh, into your, uh, I guess, your mailboxes mm-hmm. or wherever they'd go. Um, if you emailed in about the Easter egg hunt. Yeah. And we, we've been having a hard time trying to get a hold of people that have submitted that, but then yeah. never gave us their address to send them out anything. So yeah. I emailed everybody that we didn't have their address for. Uh-huh. And, um, we've received a lot of emails back. And I think there's just a few people that have not, um, emailed me back about their address. So, gotcha. um, if you think you've submitted and you didn't and send us, send me your address so I can get these out to you guys. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> but for the most part, I think we have everybody's ready to go minus one or two people. So cool. So speaking of the, the gear wrench King of the hammers contest here, we, we mentioned something and we got a lot of flack for this, uh, on a previous episode. Uh, who is Von Gittin's teammate, Jimmy? I always mess these up. <laughs> It's Levi, Shirley, or Lauren Healy. Which one is it? I don't know. Da, 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 I mix them. Da, da, da. I, they both start with L, I know, and they that's screw my problem. me up. That's my problem, too. So. I'm guessing it's L- Lauren Healy. Yes. Because I think I said Levi, Shirley last time. Yep. Okay, Lauren Healy. <laughs> so we we got hate mail from uh, both of those guys that said, how dare you call me Lauren? And Lauren wrote in saying, how dare you call me Levi? And so they were both kind of upset about it. Yeah. They didn't appreciate it very much. So. I'm sorry. Yeah. I messed that one up. <laughs> we got, we did get a bit of a hate mail though. No, I'm just kidding. They didn't call in. They don't listen to us. No. We're, we're not big enough for that. Uh, we did have ultra four <laughs> did. drivers message us and yes, say, <laughs> you guys are idiots. Yeah, pretty much. And deservedly. So, so <laughs> yeah, 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 we are actually. So, yes. um, so yeah, uh, sorry, Lauren for calling you Levi and sorry, Levi for, um, assinuating that you were Lauren. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> but we knew your, your other teammates. So yeah, you know, I think that to some, we're halfway there, right? Yeah, that, that works. Okay. 50% is passing Yeah, on a curve. Sure. So, um, cool, man. I think that about does it for updates. Make sure that you're leaving in your reviews because mm-hmm. we are getting close to 350 reviews here soon. And uh, we're going to be doing a swag pack for that one as well. So make sure that you get those reviews in so you can get some random swag from us. And speaking of that, I did just go down to a silk screener today and uh, put in my order for some new t-shirts. Oh, nice. So maybe one of those might be coming a uh, swag pack winner's way. That'd be cool. Yeah, I like the the t-shirt designs that you and uh, Murphy have come up with uh, for these coming out here. Yeah, so. um, I learned something about silk screening because Jordan, the guy, um, Bun Prince, B-U-N-N Prince, uh, gave me a tour of their facility and I learned, I asked him something that I didn't, think you could do and he said oh yeah that's totally possible and so i now i have new ideas sort of running through my head of (laughs) how to design some of these things but i think i think we might have um our first design done nice for um for the like the select few uh t-shirt pack or i don't even know what we're gonna call that but just limited edition t-shirts i guess yeah maybe i'll Maybe we'll try to open it up here in a little bit and see if we can get something done before Christmas. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, So that's exciting, uh, but we are at 331 reviews. Mm -hmm. So 19 more, and we'll be doing a giveaway for a swag pack. Yes. And we've got some pretty cool swag set up for this one. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do, definitely. (laughs) And once we get to 500, you're eligible to win a winch. So make sure you get your name in there um, sooner than later because you'll get entered for the swag packs, but Mm -hmm. um, get in there before 500 for sure. Don't wait to the end. Yeah because you want to be eligible for a winch. Absolutely. So uh, that does it for updates. We also are in uh, Jim Vember. And so that means that we did not do or mention Jim Vember last week. 
No, we did not. Yeah. I was very sad. Yeah. My bad. But this week we were going to make up for it. Oh, goody. Yeah. So, uh, this gym member, uh, you get, uh, uh, the way I've done it in the past is one gift a week mm-hmm. for Jim Vember. So four gifts, right? How many gifts are there, Jimmy? Well, are we counting the pro link? Cause I could take that. You can take that. Okay. <laughs> we'll, six. we'll see how the game works out. It's <laughs> <laughs> our six, including the pro link. No. So there's five gifts there. Okay. Uh, you only get four. Oh, so well, we're going to play a game here to figure out uh, which of the gifts you get to open. Okay. And the fifth one gets returned. (laughs) Sounds fun. (laughs) Or it might just hang out until Christmas time. (laughs) Okay. So how does this game go? So what we're going to do is I have a voicemail from somebody. Okay. So each of those box, we're going to, we need to set them up in terms of one through five. So we've got five boxes there, five packages. We'll just go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that All works. Right. Counterclockwise. That works. I like that. Uh, so we got the five boxes there, one through five, one, two, three, four, five. And we have a voicemail here from a good buddy of ours who is going to give us a couple of numbers, and he's going to tell us which two you get to open. And you get to open two because we didn't do one last week. So we're making okay. up for last week and then one for got this it. week. So you ready to hear what our friend had to say. Yes. Bring it on. Are you connected? I am connected. Here we go. Hey, Jimmy. I heard it's your month to pick out some presents. And uh, I was told that I I got to pick between a number, two numbers between one and five. So I'm thinking we'll keep it odd or keep it even. We'll keep it even between and do two and four. I hope those are the good presents. I don't know. You guys let me know and have a good recording, guys. See ya. Who was that? Awesome. That was Steve. That was Steve. From the Total Off-Road Podcast. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, man. Okay, two and four. So number two and number four. So those are both, those are the only Amazon Prime boxes in this stack. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. While uh, while you're researching, I was, mm-hmm. there are sort of five weeks in, in this month. Uh, we'll see. Then I may have to add another present or you'll just get to do five. (laughs) (laughs) I like the sound of that. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. (laughs) All right. So putting number one aside, Uh uh-huh. We'll just put it on top of the (laughs) schlamp and I'll take number two. I hope it's not fragile. Uh, Not anymore. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Pull out the old nice crescent knife in my, out of my pocket. Uh Uh-huh. Those things are sharp, by the way. They are. <laughs> Be careful. Ooh. Which one is that? I don't even know what I how I ordered them. Oh. Vice clamps. Mm-hmm. Which you might hear more about on Monday's episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, these are nice. Uh, big old, they're clamps that are work like um, adjustable pliers or locking, what, pliers. locking pliers. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Vice clamps. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, you can lock them up and they'll hold nice and tight. And these look like they're probably... A uh, three inch, four inch. They they usually measure them based on the length of the entire thing, uh, from top to bottom, or or how far they can open. Those are eleven inch. What? Yeah, that's but what they're listed. I don't as. think they could open eleven inches. Oh, uh, we can do. We'll do test. You, have you can measure against. <laughs> uh, they open pretty damn far. <clears throat> It's no, it looks more like nine inches to me. That oh, that I thought you were talking about the from elbow to elbow. That there, yeah, I don't know, three to four inches opening total. So, yeah, what's nice about these? Because uh, I noticed that you have some F style clamps in the shop, and those are awesome for like permanently holding things or holding things very very sturdily for a little bit more amount of time. You're not going to be moving them around a lot, right? These are awesome for when you're moving stuff around constantly. You're doing a, a couple of welds or a couple of grinds here and there, and then you're moving it, moving whatever you're you're working on. Right. So it's a good, mm-hmm. quick, temporary solution for clamping and things. Clamping things yeah. down. Yep. So Got I'm, it. I'm not sure what's in this one either. So that was number two. This one's number four. Well, you know it's in them. You just don't know what's <laughs> correct in them. Correct. <laughs> yeah. All right. Number four, this one's blue. This is a 
USAA box that has Amazon Prime logos on it. Yeah, it says upgrade your card care routine. Hmm. I wonder if it's a... Uh, oh, that one. Okay. <laughs> oh, bench made, benchmark abrasives. Mm-hmm. So it's a... Uh, what is this one? It's this on the is, top. It's on the back too. Oh, okay. uh, this is high density flapper disc, 120 grit. Yeah, 120 grit flapper disc. And a 60 grit as nice. well. Quantities of 10. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So some consumables. Consumables? <laughs> yes. Very nice. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Benchmark, huh? Benchmark abrasives. Um, I've, I don't know, there's probably some better brands out there for stuff, but for the value of the quantity that you get, it's a good quantity to, for the DIYer, right? You're not yeah. buying an industrial quantities where you're going through 50 flapper discs a day. Sure. Kind of thing. Right. But for the, the DIYer that's at home working on stuff, um, 10 discs at a time works out awesome. And they've got a bunch of different grit options. So I chose a really rough course one. Mm-hmm. for uh, getting through stuff really well and then a, a smoother one for smoothing down surfaces and cleaning up surfaces. On. Excellent. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Those, as you know, will definitely be used. Actually, both of those presents will be used uh-huh. on Samantha. Mm-hmm. So for sure. I figured you have a, a lot, still quite a bit more grinding and, and fabricating oh, yeah. going on with Samantha. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So cool. Awesome. Thank yeah. you very much. That's week one and week two of Jim Vember. Woo. Yeah, buddy. So along with uh, those, we had a couple of corrections. Okay. And uh, this one's a, a really fun one because it comes all the way from down under. Down under. Down under from a a Ron or a Ron. a ra 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 Yeah, a ra 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 Not Charles Locke? No, nope, not Charles Locke. I don't this know. If, have we ever Aaron. heard Aaron's voice? I don't think we have. Okay. That'll, so this will be fun. Yeah, I wonder who has a better accent, him or Charles. I bet you they have the same accent. Yeah, I don't know. We'll be the judge of that. I I wonder if <laughs> I bet you there's I can pretty much guarantee there's different Australian accents by where you live in Australia, huh? I would assume so. Yeah. Kind of kind of similar to United regional, States, yeah, right? regional so accents. That all, that all I wonder if sense. they also have different terms they use depending on where they live. Probably. Cuz like I know that the secretary uses some really weird terminology sometimes. I'm like, "What the hell are you talking about?" Like a bubbler cuz she's from mm-hmm. Massachusetts. Does she say pop? Uh, she used to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I thought she was really weird for it. Huh. Uh, but yeah, bubbla. She was, she goes, Oh look, I what need to, a find, it's a water fountain, like a drinking fountain. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay. anyways, there's a bunch of little like different terminology things that Massachusettsonians use that I'm like, you guys are fucking weird. Massachusettsians. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. So I don't know if like there's different regions of Australia that they have. I mean, they already I'm have sure. stupid, weird names for stuff as well. So I yeah. wonder if they get stupider or weirder as you get across the country. <laughs> no, I was listening to my favorite Australian YouTube channel, uh-huh. Mighty Car Mods, and they just had an en- They bought an engine off of eBay and threw it into a vehicle and it didn't work. <laughs> right. It was okay. just it was just blown. It was bad. And they're like, oh, we need to check the comp I'm computer. Like, the, the what? The comp, like, yeah. And they kept going. Yeah, the comp. The comp's bad. The comp. Oh, it's all bad. That comp is way off. And I'm like, what are they talking about? And they're like, so we're going to check the compression and we're going to check it per cylinder. I'm like, oh my gosh, (laughs) you guys are silly. Just speaking of uh, throwing engines into cars, did you see the Tesla out at SEMA? The LS1 Tesla (laughs) or the LS LS Tesla? Tesla. I don't know if it was a one, but yeah, Yeah. I didn't see it. I heard about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was funny. I was like, so wait, does that mean they put the Tesla motor into the Corvette? Because I want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Anyways, uh, we have a correction. Not really a correction. Just some information education from a rubber Ron. Okay. He says that a ute is pretty much anything that's like a pickup. So, if it has a cab and a pickup bed, it's a ute. So, that could be... What did he write it in or message us? He messaged us and sent pictures. Oh, okay. Yeah. So... Oh, I wanted to hear him. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, he wrote it in on Instagram. Boo. He didn't call in. lame Uh So anyways, he said a ute is anything with a pickup bed, pretty much. Okay. A truck is essentially like uh, an 18-wheeler. Oh. So that's what a truck is. Got it. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, he also sent a picture of my forerunner and said, this is neither. <laughs> <laughs> what is so. it? So w- w- we call it trucks, uh-huh. semis. Right. Yep. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. And then SUVs, SUVs, but yeah. I was just, I was thinking also that in like England, they're called lorries. 
Oh yeah, like right? a semi is a semi yeah. or a truck uh-huh. is called a well not a, a truck in Australia, a semi here uh-huh. in England they're a lorry. A lorry, yeah. yeah. I wonder what I so I asked him I was like so what is a pickup then? What do you guys call pickups? And I wonder if that would just be a Ute, but it's we'll a see. Ute, that'd probably. be my guess. Yeah. But he hasn't responded back. They're uh, they're all asleep over there because they're weird and they sleep during the day for some reason. Lock is up. He just messaged me. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah. Tell a run 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 to get on his messaging, man. Mm. So, anyways, uh, that was the the fun educational down under uh, information for everybody out there about trucks, Utes, and and non trucks and Utes. <laughs> <laughs> And neither, <laughs> neither. <laughs> yeah, uh, man. So cool. We, before we get into Hollister and last weekend, I did some work on the F one fifty. Oh, okay. So I, uh, finally traced down my blinker issue. Was it the fluid? Yeah, it was the blinker fluid. I swapped that out and it's all good to go now. Glad to hear so, it. No, the, uh, the rear blinkers on the F one fifty, Apparently the whole light housing flashes, not okay. just like one light bulb. Interesting. When it's are they LEDs? No. Huh. No. So uh I when I was going around the vehicle the first time checking all the blinkers and everything, I s I thought the rear blinkers were working just fine because it was flashing, right? The one light, the upper light was flashing. And uh wow. but there's more more than one light. Yeah. Got since it. there's more than one light bulb that flashes in the F one fifties. Uh, you have to make sure that the whole housing is flashing pretty much. So I replaced the bulb that was not flashing and it all works great again. Yes. <laughs> so uh, the blinker, that was interesting. That was fun. Uh, the And then I changed the oil again. Oh. And the first time I changed the oil, I remember I came on the podcast and threw a fit about it because oil just gets everywhere with mm-hmm. that truck whenever you change the oil. Um, the engineers that put together the oil maintenance for that vehicle uh, hate mechanics apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, but, uh, and so you know, what was the problem last time? I just remember mm-hmm. it, it, the way that it drained out, drained more or less right on to the skid plate mm-hmm. and just went everywhere. And then from the oil filter. Yeah. So the, the oil plug, so the oil pan drain plug, uh, there's a, a hard line that goes right in front of the drain plug. Oh, really? So as the oil dumps out of the drain plug, it hits this hard line and kind of splits into two different directions. <laughs> and you're like, dang it. Come on, man. <laughs> so that's the first thing. And uh, I was able to figure out a way to keep that from happening by putting a piece of cardboard right there so that the oil came out, hit the cardboard and then went down into my oil container okay. sure catch container the catch bin and then just held it there until the oil was down far enough where it wasn't going to hit the drain the the metal line anymore the hard line the oil filter uh comes off the bottom of the engine block the front of the engine block which is up above <laughs> the squirrel out there. i watched it just climb over your tire and down <laughs> the face of it and by like across your wheel <laughs> that's funny uh and so the so <laughs> squirrel yeah <laughs> the oil filter on the f-150s yeah. on the EcoBoost engines is on the front side of the engine block down at the bottom which is right on top of the whole ifs uh cross member support everything right there and uh you can't get your arm up there very easily you have to take off one of the little the fascia things on the front stick your arm way up in there and grab the oil filter and you have to get it off pretty much by hand. There's not, I mean, I guess you can get the different tools that can go on the end of the oil filter and get it off with a wrench, but even still like getting a hand up there to finagle and get a wrench on there. Uh, it's not friendly. Okay. And so, uh, but the problem though is like when you undo the oil filter, all this oil is going to come out, right? Yes. <laughs> and it looks Typically. like there's like this little catch if container. There's still oil in yes, there. <laughs> there's still oil in the engine. <laughs> There's a little catch container right on top of the whole cross member and IFS assembly there. And it looks like it's set up perfectly to catch the oil and drain it out the front where you're sticking your hand up in there to take the oil filter off. But the problem was the first time I did this with the F-150, oil came off the front side and the back side of the IFS and uh, the cross member and everything, which means then it gets onto this little dinky skid plate there and goes everywhere and you can't, then there's no way to catch it. <laughs> and so uh, 
I was like, but you had mentioned something last time because last time I did it, I was facing up my driveway. Yeah. And so maybe the oil was hitting that and going off the backside of the IFS cross member uh, because it was the backside was down the driveway. Sure. So this time I turned the truck around and faced the truck downhill. Yeah. So hopefully the oil would come off, hit the catch plate and come out the front. Mm-hmm. Nope. Didn't help. No, no. <laughs> so I now am, you just made a puddle. I just made a puddle. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then the problem with once the oil gets all on that skid plate down there, you can't clean it all up. <laughs> and so I just chanted. I was like, you know what? Fuck this. <laughs> Fuck Ford engineers. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, uh, I got it all done though and, uh, got myself filthy covered in oil and, uh, got big old. Luckily I put down a tarp underneath the vehicle this time because I was like, I can't, it's the area that the oil comes out of is bigger than my, my, uh, metal pan pan. Uh, and so I put down a drip tray, the drip tray. Yeah. Uh, and so I put down a tarp this time. So I was able to keep all the oil off my driveway, but then like, I was like, I have to park the truck out in the street because there's oil all over my skid plate and (laughs) there's no way to clean it. (laughs) So, uh, I, uh, re-oiled my street, which is nice. (laughs) Very Uh, very courteous of you. (laughs) Yeah. So it'll be able to last longer now. Uh No wonder there are so many car accidents (laughs) right in front of your house. (laughs) Right. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. Um, so anyways, that was the F one fifty. I thought that I had learned a little bit from the first time I did it and I'd be able to apply it and it went quicker this time. I knew which skid plates and which access hatches I had to pull off in order to get to the oil. Um, drains and and the oil filter, but it did nothing for helping keep it cleaner. So yeah, interesting. Yeah, if anybody has like a good way of <laughs> changing the oil on an F one fifty EcoBoost, let me know. I would love to hear it. Speedy D. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Like it's at that point where I'm like, it's worth taking in to places. My only issue is I've taken it, uh, cars into mechanics before for oil yeah. changes, and they don't fill up the oil all the way. Mm. And I'm like. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> this is the simplest thing to do. Why can't you guys do this? Correctly? Check it before you leave, huh? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Um, so anyways, that was my experience at the F-150. Nice. Um, and then I also went and, uh, you know, I, I blew up the four seven gear in the forerunner. And so I was like, all right, so I need to get, I need to rebuild my transfer case because it's leaking too. So I've been meaning to pull it off and rebuild it. So I'm like, okay, now's a great time to do that. Um, but it still works in two wheel drive and I need to get it refereed. And in order to get it refereed, it has to be able to drive because they have to put it on a dyno in order to test the emissions. Right. So I was like, Oh, I can wait until after the referee in order to pull the T case and rebuild it and take the rig out of commission. Or I can look for a replacement T case. (laughs) I don't have a spare T case right now. So it might be nice to have a spare T case sitting around. Um, and so I was like, okay, so what would I need to, to get? And I started planning it out and I was like, okay, I want to find a T case ultimately with a 23 spline input four seven gear, uh, gear driven, uh, top shift, um, with the triple geared fl- triple drilled flanges on it okay. and with the twin stick already done. If it's not no biggie, I can pull the ball to tents out and go yeah, that's a piece of cake. Yeah. So I was like, that would be like my, my holy grail, my unicorn that I'd be looking for. Right. Okay. Yeah. And brand new, uh, or I guess brand new rebuilt from trail gear. Those are $1,700 17. Yes. Holy cow. Yep. Uh, and so I was like, eh, I'll look around and see if I can find one used. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if right? I can't find one used, I'm willing to get whatever transfer case, as long as it's a gear driven that I can find and I'll just do all the modifications on it myself <laughs> to get it to be what I want it to be. Yeah. So I was talking with Hussman about all this and he goes, why do you want a 23 spline? And I was like, well, because it's stronger. It's quite a bit bigger. It's a usually chromoly. So it's, it's, you know, you're getting rid of fail points and he goes, what's going to happen. And this is why I love Hussman, right? He goes, what's going to happen when you're out in the middle of Utah somewhere and you crack your case in half? Um, you're not going to be able to find 23 spline parts anywhere in Utah, uh, in order to get your transfer case put back together and get back out on trail or get you somewhere. I was like, interesting. He goes, however, 21 spline stuff, you can usually find those. At least you can go to like an auto, a wrecking yard somewhere and find a stock transfer case. That's 21 spline, a 2.28 gear. Um, but it'll get you off the trail and get you back home kind of thing. And I was like, 
That's an interesting point. So, uh, in order to keep the, the ability to find a parts while I'm away from home easier, I decided to do a 21 spline for seven gear instead of uh, a 23 spline. Yeah. I was actually thinking about this a little myself because in this instance, you mm-hmm. actually, and we're not positive of what you broke, but we're, we're highly thinking you ripped the teeth off the four seven. That's what I'm thinking happened. Yeah. Right. You didn't break that the shafts, Mm-mm. right? No. So the gearing apparently is weaker than the shafts are. Yeah. So even then going up to a 23 spline might not really be that beneficial. Yeah. It's kind of like diminishing returns, right? Kind of. Yeah. You know, cause uh, there's, apparently the teeth on the four seven are weaker than the mm-hmm. 21 spline shaft. Supposedly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to put that, if you're going to put the T case through any stresses and, and ha- cause damage, mm-hmm. y- it's not the axles or it's not the, it's not the input, input shafts, shafts or that output are, shafts that are, that are most likely going to be your weak point. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it really got me kind of thinking about Samantha cause I was thinking about upgrading those to 23 splines yeah. uh-huh. right now. And lately I've been kind of like, well, why? Yeah. Right. Cause uh-huh. if the 21, like maybe they'll break maybe, uh-huh. but it le- seems like at least in your case that the gearing broke first. And, and I don't know how many people I'd like to talk to some people that have broken 21 spline input shafts and ask them, did they also rip the teeth off of their gears? Mm-hmm. Like, so did and, anything else break? Yeah. Did anything <laughs> else broke when you broke your 21 spline input shafts? Uh, and you know, if so, then are you sure that the 21 spline was the breakage first or did the gear the, the teeth break and get bound up and then you snapped the, the yeah. input shafts? I don't know. And it's also one of those things that how far up do you want to transfer the forces? Uh huh. Yeah. Cause now if you have 23 spline and the gearing's fine, now you're transferring all those forces up into your transmission. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. And then now are you going to break your transmission? Mm-hmm. Which is even worse. And yeah. to some extent. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. And it's, I, I'm, it's an interesting talk, right? Yeah, it, it is an interesting <laughs> little topic. Um, and so I think that you did the right choice by sticking with 21. One, because it's just going to be easier and get you out sooner. Mm-hmm. Two, I'm not quite sure if it's needed. You know, I'm yeah. not quite sure. Like 23 splines, like, you know, the unicorn of the the Toyota T cases and transfer transmissions. But yeah. I wonder how much actually stronger it is. Yeah. And if it's even worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that was kind of my question. I was like, you know, honestly, if I'm going to be snapping, um, a 23 spline input shaft, then I'm probably going to be destroying a lot of other stuff too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) By the way, your rear axles broke (laughs) too. Right. (laughs) So I'm like, it would be really nice if I'm going to be snapping that and have other stuff broken too, to be able to just go pick up a junkyard RF one, a transfer case and throw it into the rig. I can't do that. I'll have to order a 23 spline shaft and, and get a T case and put it all together before I can put it back in the rig. Right. So I was like, you know, I really like the idea of just being able to find a stock transfer case somewhere and throw it in the rig. Yeah. I'll lose the four, seven gear, but I'll still get four wheel drive. And with the front, as long as the front case isn't destroyed, I'll still have a combined (laughs) 4.7. Right. So, and how often are you really down in low, low? Uh, yeah. Uh, only for really steep descents kind of thing. Right. So, uh, I was like, I really like that idea. Um, that's one of the reasons why I love just sitting there and brainstorming with Hussman about stuff. Um, but, uh, we got to talk about that while I was over there, uh, helping him put the front axle on the buggy. Yeah. Uh, so that we can kind of start mapping out, uh, his upper links on the front axle and his, uh, steering Ram. Um, and then also we put the brake lines and set up and routed all of his brake lines for his rear axle. So that was a lot of fun. We did that. Um, and man, those axles are sexy. They are, they are so good looking. (laughs) Uh, so it was fun looking over the axles and, uh, just kind of talking, uh, suspension geometry with him and options for remaking, uh, the frame, his chassis, um, to, you know, mount the motor mounts, but still clear his upper links on the front and all this other stuff. So, um, it was fun. I had a good time, uh, doing that. The next day we went over to the snail trail shop. Yes. Everybody got together and Juan came over as well. Yep. Juan from Tacoma powered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and we installed his winch. Yes, we did. And that was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed doing that thoroughly as well. Yeah, that was a good day. And mm-hmm. and I'm glad you came over because I learned a lot that day. Um, really? Kind of. Um, well, just sort of, you know, you put a lot more stress into some of the things that I don't think I would have cared that much about. Okay. You know, like you really cared about wrapping the wires in specific places when I would have just like zip tied it down in certain areas. <laughs> yeah. You know, cause you didn't want rub points and you were, you know, you put extra sheathing on it. I'm like, it's already got a lot of sheathing or it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's already got a rubber outer layer. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe if you're concerned about a rub point, wrap some electrical tape around yeah. it in that one spot and then <laughs> yeah. move on, you know, but you're like, no, I don't, that's not good. We want to c- try to get as straight a shot as possible. The Warren solenoid that we put in, mm-hmm. I think, is a great thing. I'm I'm excited to show that off in the video that we're mm-hmm. going to create yep. um, for the, for installing this winch because I think that's something that not a lot of people put in or care about. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. they just leave their um, the winch hot wired the whole entire time. Yep. Where this solenoid, it's a 350. 350 amp solenoid from mm-hmm. uh, Warren. It's essentially a giant relay, right? Correct. Um, and so uh, you can turn off the power to your winch when it's not being used and yeah. only have power running to the winch uh, when it's being used. Then you can keep the, the, the hot line from your battery to the solenoid as short as possible. Um, you can suspend it. I like to suspend them so they're not going to be rubbing on anything ever. Um, you can heat wrap them if you have to route them kind of close to the engine. There, there's a lot of things you can do, and, and it stays really, really safe, but still allows you to get the full functionality of your winch when you really, really need it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a that was a really good insight of um, when installing a winch. That's something that I've never, you mm-hmm. know, never thought about. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, that that went pretty smooth. I mean, I think that whole install for the most part went pretty smooth, minus we didn't have some of the hardware. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. And and it was sort of an oversight on all Lawn. of us. We're going to call Lon again because well, okay. well, he's not here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> sounds good. To defend himself. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know, I don't know if we assumed hardware came with the parts or yeah. we just never ripped it open to see if we we're going to need it or we never determined how we we're going to adhere it to the vehicle. Yeah. But yeah, I thought, I mean, it was, he already had a bumper on, so it was super, you know, like eight bolts and the bumper came off. Yeah. And, uh, and the winch plate was already built into the bumper. Mm-hmm. So it, all of it went together fairly easily. It just was a matter of figuring out how to run the wires and mm-hmm. uh, connect the control box, mm-hmm. which we actually welded. Sorry, Nick, up at Relas- <laughs> Relentless. We ground down some of the powder coating off the bumper and welded a little bracket on in the um, winch area so we could put the winch controller in a very specific spot. And yeah. I think that came out great. I was really excited about how that came out. That that was a, a fantastic solution for mounting the control box for the winch. Yeah, super yeah. easy. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just cut some tube and then we modified the bracket that you were supposed to put it on mm-hmm. that came with the winch and we cut off these ears and just made it into a flat thing. And yeah, and just welded those two together and then welded it to the, to the bumper. And mm-hmm. man, it, yeah, that thing... It's stout and it's going to be great. It's easy to, if you, it has a wireless controller, but if the, for some reason that's out and you need to use the manual one, it's mm-hmm. right there in the front and easy to get to. Yep. I thought that turned out really well. Yep. I was, that was uh, definitely one of the cleaner winch installs I've been a part of. Cool. So yeah. I'm granted I've only been a part of like four or five, but, <laughs> um, that one turned out really, really well. I'm, I'm happy with, uh, everything being routed securely. Um, everything is secured inside the bumper. Um, it's not going anywhere. It's easy to access. Um, I think it, it came out awesome. Yeah. So that's yeah. going to be a neat video to show, uh, show off to people. So, yeah, I'm curious how well, how much dubbing I'm going to have to do for audio oh. because just, there was a lot of cooks going, you know, cooks in the kitchen <laughs> or, or whatever you want to yeah. say. There was a lot of there, you know, cause there was you and me, there was Juan and then there was Hussman uh-huh. and all of us were over and I'm trying to capture footage and somebody's talking somewhere, Yeah, you know, so <laughs> it's, you know, I thought we had a lot of good jokes going. <laughs> there was, there was a lot of good jokes, um, but we'll see. I mean, I'll probably leave some of the, some of that in there, but I'll probably just mute the video and do um, voiceover on quite Lame. a bit as well lame so. <laughs> i'm kidding well we'll see we'll see how it comes out <laughs> yeah i'm not terribly concerned about the the overall quality of that one it, i think the the high the, what i really want to just show off is the 
uh, solenoid section. Yeah. So, um, as a, a good safety precaution that people should do when installing winches. Mm-hmm. So cool. Yeah. I like it. Um, there's, uh, after looking into that, um, I found, uh, bigger relays that mm-hmm. are like 400 to 450 amp relays. Oh, wow. Uh, because we were looking at the, the spec sheet of yeah. the winch later mm-hmm. and it said under full load that winch will pull 415 amps. Wow. <laughs> Uh, it which, was a 13,000 pound, yeah, 13,000 pound winch. Yeah. So, uh, I think theoretically we should have really a 400 to 450 amp relay on there rather than the 350 amp we put on. Yeah. Um, but he's going to have to be in some really shitty situation <laughs> to pull over 350 amps with that winch. Yeah. And in so. theory, if you are in that really city sh- situation, then you pr- should probably add a snatch block, right? And then mm-hmm. that would make everything easier on the winch. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. There's we'll, ways now, around it. Now we got to talk to Juan about snatch blocks. <laughs> yes. Actually, one thing that's pretty cool is we were approached by ARS, which is adventure rack systems. Okay. And they approached me uh, and were curious if I wanted to put a new bed rack on my Tacoma oh. after the one I just built. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. And <laughs> Oh, I was researching it a little bit and it was sort of one of the bent metal. It's like one eighth inch. I think it's aluminum um, racking that you kind of bolt together and set up. Okay. Um, it looks like a great system and they have a bunch of different options that you can put onto it. Okay. Like accessory. Yeah. Mounting accessory options? mounting okay. options. Like it just has the normal like rack that goes over or you can add sides or you can have it be mid height or full height. And then you can okay. add a center section across that has different ways to attach a whole bunch of different things from, you know, a Molly panel setup to, um, you know, you can put tires on it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they approached me and they said, Hey, do you, are you interested in running our rack? And I said, well, I just built one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just made one for myself and I actually really like it. And I think it's cool that I did it, you know, and they're like, oh, okay, cool. Um, and then I said, but I'm still interested in doing the install. Uh-huh. If you guys are okay with m- me finding somebody or, you know, finding somebody else to run your rack, but I'll make a video for it. Yeah. And they're like, oh yeah, totally. Nice. And so we're, um, I contacted Juan uh-huh. and I was like, Hey man, do you need a rack? I didn't see if you had a rack when you came <laughs> over and he's like, man, I've really been wanting to get one. And I said, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Here we so, go. <laughs> um, I think actually, actually today after we uh, record, I'm going to head over there and cause it, another thing that's really cool about ARS is they're here in Sacramento. Yeah. And so, um, I'm going to run over there and pick up the rack and then the goal is to get it on before the Tacoma meetup. Nice. Um, which is on the 20th. So. Well, yeah, that'll be, that'll be really cool. Yeah. So maybe we'll have to have another get together day and throw a rack on. Yeah, that'd be fun. I, I'm definitely interested. Um, I have some pallet racking. I get to, I need to set up here at the warehouse <laughs> shortly. Um, different type of rack. Yeah. Different type of rack. Uh, and then, um, I want to try and get my TK swapped out before the Tacoma powered meetup because, um, you know, I put that ad out on, out on a uh, Facebook marketplace looking for a transfer case. And I was oh. like, I'm just looking for a basic stock transfer case, top shift preferably, but we can do forward shift and swap out the rails. Um, and I'm looking for, for 200 bucks, you know, okay. does anybody have one? Yeah. And I actually got a couple people that messaged me saying you're fucking crazy trying to get one for 200 bucks. Oh really? Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. They're still out there. Like, don't knock me for trying. I know uh, I said my buddy has gotten two of them in the past, like 60 days for that price. Yeah. So they're definitely out there. And he goes, he goes, no, they're not. Trail gear is paying $400 for cores right now. Really? So anybody who's selling one for $200 is stupid. They should be selling it to trail gear for 400 bucks. Wow. And I was like, Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that, but I guess people don't know that either. So yeah. So if you want to sell me, uh, you know, or us a T case for 200 bucks, we'll, yeah. we'll be more than happy to pay you for it and exactly. we'll turn it around for 400. Exactly. We're start, uh, buying T cases, everybody. Um, so anyways, uh, sure as hell, uh, I got a bunch of people actually tagged me in a transfer case for sale posts. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, one guy though actually spoke up and said, Hey, I have a transfer case. I mean, I kind of put in the post that I'll take a perfectly stock one and build it the way I want. But ultimately, here's what I'm looking for. If you have this, I'm willing to pay a lot more money. Okay. And this guy 
spoke up and was like, yeah, I actually uh, run a shop over in Orville oh. and I have this transfer case uh, available up on the shelf uh, for sale and it's a 21 spline input four seven gear top shift gear driven <laughs> transfer case. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, that's what I'm looking for. That's like exactly what I'm looking for. Perfect. And so I was like, and we, we agreed on a price and I was like, Hey, what if we did this price and gave you a Morphlate as well? Yeah. And he goes, what the hell is a Morphlate? <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. So I explained to him what it was. He goes, Oh, that's actually pretty damn cool. And so uh, we did that. I was able to get the T case for him for even even reduced price and trade with a Morphlate as well. Nice. And, uh, went up there and got it and it already had the ball detents moved from it as well. So it's all set up oh, ready to go for, st- for twin stick. Literally all I have to do is I'm pretty sure the flanges on it match uh, my drive shafts as well. So I'm pretty sure all I have to do is take off my T case and put this one up. Hell yeah. And I'm like, man, that was freaking awesome. <laughs> That's a uh, yeah, so, problem solved for sure. Yeah, big time. So I'll be able to swap out my T case without taking Kermit down at all, um, which means I'll still get to keep driving him around and try and get those OBD2 monitors to set um, and uh, hopefully get him refereed as quickly as I can here. So, But my goal is to take him out to the Tacoma Powered Meetup and um, I'll be driving 50 miles an hour all the way out there. <laughs> <laughs> to try and get the stupid OBD2 OBD monitors to set. All right, so we're not going to carpool. Oh, well, why not? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I drive Bobcat, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyways, um, yeah, that was other than uh, the other fun thing we did this weekend. Um, that was pretty much all I've been up to, and that's kind of update on, on Tyler Land here. Nice, yeah. So the other thing we did was uh, we went down to Hollister Hills. Yeah, um, it, it was uh, an interesting town. Uh, <laughs> it was fun to hang out in the town and yeah. do the. No, what, yeah. <laughs> what are we doing at, down at Hollister? No, we went down to the SVRA park. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hollister Hills has a really cool, uh, or Hollister has a really cool off road park, um, state park in it, mm-hmm. um, which has a, a bunch of obstacle courses, um, some stair steps, a little hill climbs. And stuff like that. And then it has a whole massive trail network to yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, where mm-hmm. you're, you know, bombing up hills and there's like a little rock quarry section in an area. There's just, you know, you're driving along hillsides, you're getting up to the top and you get these amazing views of either Hollister or towards the ocean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a cool, cool park to go to and visit. If you haven't gone to it, you know, and you're nearby, you should definitely go and check it out for sure. Yeah. There's, uh, anything there from like mild to wild and you, a lot of places you can kind of pick and choose the direction you want to go, um, mm-hmm. to figure out if you want to play that way or not. Mm-hmm. So it was your first time ever there. Yeah. I was a, a Hollister Hills virgin, man. Uh, my cherry got popped going yeah. out there. I didn't get to drive my own vehicle. Nope. <laughs> Cause I don't have four low. But uh, I got to be in the wrong seat in Bobcat all day, yeah. Um, which is still fun. I enjoyed myself. Um, I think it's definitely a place to go check out. It's not my personal cup of tea. Um, I think we were talking about this while we were out there. I really enjoy going places. Yes. My goal of going off-roading is to get to some place that only 1% of the population gets to go to. Sure. And, um, but I like to have, you know, go over some difficult trails to get there. So I want a destination. I go for the destinations of it Mm -hmm. and Hollister Hills wasn't that great of a destination in my opinion. Um, there's a ton of poison oak everywhere. Yes, there is. (laughs) And, uh, everything is all the same color. It's all the sage, essentially the color of sage. The ground seems like it's the color of sage. Um, Mm -hmm. All the surrounding hills are all sage colored. The trees around you that are moss covered. I mean, it's kind of cool to see the moss covered trees there, but um, I will say comparing it to Prairie City, which I'm not a big fan of Prairie City either. I think in terms of going out there and having a place close to home to to do trials and stuff on, it's great. But uh, Prairie City sucks to go out to, especially during the summer, because there's no shade. No, <laughs> it's just a bake out the whole time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, and so, uh, it's, but it's Hollister, way better than Prairie City. Oh, it's 100%. It's a huge improvement over Prairie City. I will give it that. And for some place 
you know, if you do live nearby to Hollister or you've never been there before, absolutely. You should be going there. It's a great place to go. But for me, it's a longer drive to go to Hollister than it is to go up to Rubicon. Yes. Or, or Fordyce. I think sure. it's, I'm closer to Fordyce than I'm to Rubicon. Um, or, or Barrett Lake or Slick Rock or Deer Valley or any of these other trails. And those have just some of the most beautiful destinations. Oh, absolutely. So I'm a big fan of, but if you lived in San Jose or the, the South Bay, yes, I would be at Hollister a lot. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, yeah. you're five hours, four mm-hmm. to five hours from the Sierra Nevada's mm-hmm. uh, Tahoe area mm-hmm. where you're one to two hours from Hollister. Exactly. If I lived in the Bay area, I would be going to Hollister. And I think it would be a lot better, mm-hmm. but it's you literally because of where I am and the location and how easy, how much easier it is to get to the Sierra Nevadas than it is to get to the Bay area. Not, sure. not to including have to fight and deal with Bay area traffic. Yeah. Um, it's just not my personal cup of tea. Yeah. But I, yeah, I'm not that, knocking the park or anything. I'm just saying I'm spoiled for where I live. <laughs> <laughs> I think is what I, my conclusion I came sure, to. <laughs> absolutely. I think the park's outstanding for yeah. a park. Absolutely. It's, yes. it has so much to offer, you know, mm-hmm. mug bog pits to uh, hill climbs to, you know, I was telling you that they used to run the ultimate top truck challenge out there, mm-hmm. which you've never heard of or I've never heard seen of. I've never seen one. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have to get you some old footage of that. Mm-hmm. Um, they used to do all kinds of things out there. We never, we actually, we didn't go to the tank trap. We didn't show you the tank trap, oh. but when we were driving around, we happened to go from the old, the old obstacle course. We drove up to the rock quarry. We drove up to the top of the hill <laughs> uh-huh. at the rock quarry. Lee Lim almost rolled. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He was down there with us and wheeling wine and whiskey was down there with us. So yeah. I think we should have, we should mention that, that we, we drove all the way down there to go hang out with those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we were driving around up the top of the mountain and I point down and I go, that's, that's truck Hill right there. Yeah. You that know? was interesting to see. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. it's just this long straight Hill for the most part that goes up with it. It's really sandy at the bottom. So you have to get a whole bunch of momentum to go up it. And then at the top, it, it has like a lot of water run outs and just grip from tires and mm-hmm. your, um, gouges from tires and things going up it. So it gets hard, hard pack at the top, but it has a lot of cutouts in the, in the hillside mm-hmm. where down below it's soft. So it's this really kind of, you have to play this balance of what you're going through. Yeah. Um, and I was saying like, yeah, you know, somewhat jokingly, I was saying like, oh, somebody rolls there like once a week. Yeah. You're like you every know? weekend there's, there's <laughs> somebody who rolls down truck hill. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and then like you even said, you're like, and I was like, really? I was like, man, that's, I'm surprised they still have that open. You're like, well, maybe it's not every weekend. You're yeah. like, maybe I was exaggerating, but, but there's a lot of, rollovers and injuries yeah. due to truck hill. And I was like, okay, cool. I mean, whatever. Yeah. So then we <laughs> wheeled around and we went down to the, and we were on at that point we were on McCrazy, which is, um, wheeling wine and whiskey always talks about it. It's the section that's really hard, but we were on the path that leads to McCrazy, but from the top. Okay. And so we we're coming this, the, an uh, odd, somewhat odd direction. Like we didn't go through the tunnel. Like everybody always talks about. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we come down and then, yeah, we met up with the, the poly goats. Yeah. And so, uh, who are the poly goats? Yeah. So the poly goats are Cal poly, San Lu- Cal poly, San Luis Obispo. Um, it's their four by four club. Yeah. So it was a bunch of college kids. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> and, uh, we, and sort of the whole reason we went to Hollister was because, uh, Jason green was going to go to Hollister because he wanted to go see the poly goats because yeah. he's a, a San Luis Obispo alumni. Cal poly alum. Yep. yep. And so, we're like, okay, yeah, we'll go down and hang out in Hollister for a few hours. Yeah. So we went down there and uh, we met so up with the my, poly goats. My dad is a, a Cal Poly alum. Oh, is as he? As well. Yeah. Oh. Does, was he a poly goat? Nope, he was not. <laughs> so I don't know. He, he might have had a, a fun time too being out there. And if we had his truck out there as well, I yeah. think that would have been neat. Yeah, but, for sure. Yeah. So we hung out with the poly goats for a while. Just at first, we were watching them try to drive up this hill and sort of, I kind of was like, I want to distance myself from this situation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At first we walked because like we were talking to some of them up at the top of McCrazy. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, I, I don't know, I turned, noises. I turned around to talk to somebody else. And when I turned back around, everybody was gone. No. I was like, where the hell did everybody go? And then I walk and I look and everyone's walking down this road off to the side. Somebody coming over and uh, I walk up and there's 40 people 
40 college kids standing around this JK that is in a very precarious <laughs> spot. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's where everybody is. Okay. <laughs> Got yeah. it. So what was going on there, Jimmy? Well, they're just, they're trying to go up this hill mm-hmm. and around this rock ledge area. Mm-hmm. And they're going in a way that I would have not chosen to go. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and so and there was a guy, there was another college kid there trying to direct them up. And at that point I was like, okay, well, I would say back off and get the hell out of there. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, the guy was like, no, keep going up yeah, the side fine. of this mountain. Keep going up the side of the hill, way off camber. You're getting more and more yeah, and more, more and more, and more off camber and leaning you more and more and more into a rock. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I was like, well, I'm going to let him do his thing. Yeah. So uh, he eventually backed off and then um, another Toyota went up, a first gen four runner. Yep. Went up and it was having front hub issues, mm-hmm. but eventually made it up the hill. And then um, a third gen four runner that looked pretty bone stock with just some bigger wheels yeah. uh, tried to attack it and really didn't succeed very well. And by bigger wheels, we mean like 30, maybe 31s. Yeah. Not much <laughs> bigger. Yeah. I mean, maybe I don't think there are 33s. No. I don't think they're that large. So, um, but then, you know, once everybody, uh, had gotten off the hill, it kind of, everybody walked up back up to where we parked originally. And then everybody was circled around (laughs) Jason's buggy. (laughs) Yeah. And Jason was like, it was like, we didn't even exist at all. It was (laughs) right. (laughs) Like nobody else existed. Just Jason and the buggy, Jason and the buggy. (laughs) Everybody was curious about the buggy. Yeah. Um, so that was cool. But I mean, give Jason his fame, you know, in front Mm -hmm. of all these college kids. Mm -hmm. Um, he had a good time, (laughs) uh, you know, and then eventually somebody asked like, so what would it take for me to get a ride in the buggy? You know? And, and then Jason's like, you want to ride? Let's go. Yep. And uh, mm-hmm. so he did all of McCrazy up and back once and one and a half times. He went down it and then all the way back up. But then I didn't he go down again. I don't think so. Oh, uh, so but it giving. Oh, uh, I guess he went down coming out of it. Maybe. Yeah. When he came back to us. Yeah. I don't know which way he went the end of the day. through that. But uh, I don't know how many rides he gave. At least two mm-hmm. I know of. To mm-hmm. um, and you know, so uh, we're kind of being vague because I'll, you'll hear a lot about this on Wheeling Wine and Whiskey's episode. Yes, uh, um, we kind come of are on Tuesday. On Tuesday, yeah, we already kind of covered um, a lot of this stuff. But mm-hmm. um, but I did want to get your impressions because um, you know I thought that. It, it was interesting to take you down there without your rig, mm-hmm. you know, and have you experience it. But I do want to know. So now that you have gotten to ride in Bobcat fairly mm-hmm. recently, what did you, do you think Bobcat is all that rickety is that I make it out to be? Um, no, you yes don't have to no. be gentle here. No. So here's, here's the thing about Bobcat. I think Bobcat is put together better than my forerunner is. Yeah. Like if we had to go in a, a durability contest and a dependability contest, I'd pick Bobcat over the forerunner. Hmm. Okay. Um, but Bobcat to me is a fair weather wheeler. Okay. Um, I would not choose Bobcat to go snow wheeling with in a snowstorm. Okay. And well, I would not choose Bobcat to go wheeling with in 90 to hundred degree weather because it doesn't have an air conditioner. Yeah. Cause there's no air conditioner. Um, and there's sure. not, but what about the winter? Of- what what makes the winter you wouldn't wheel it in the winter? Um, because there's not a lot of insulation. I mean, there's the there's pretty much um, like the, the, you have door panel missing, <laughs> like your your window, your driver window, uh, it doesn't really roll up and down. I mean, okay, you you push it up and down. Yes, but, um, the heater works great though. The heater works great. Yeah. <laughs> um, but like if I'm going to choose Bobcat or the forerunner to do storm wheeling, I'm going to choose the forerunner. Um, okay. And I don't, I don't know why it's just, it's more comfortable to me in, in adverse weather conditions. I guess I can, I feel like I can control my immediate environment a lot easier and better with the forerunner than your, Bobcat. Your media, my immediate. Oh uh, yeah. Like are you making fun of me because I don't have a radio either. <laughs> well that too. I wasn't going to bring that up. Uh, Uh, so yeah, I was, um, but I was pleasantly impressed with how it was writing. I didn't feel like we were getting jostled around a lot. I didn't feel like, um, because I've ridden in Bobcat on four dice Yeah, and that was pretty rough. (laughs) Yeah. But I think you were also, when we were on four dice, I think you were at nine, 10 PSI in your tires. Uh, maybe when was that last Sierra Trek? No, it was the the year before when we did the big uh, maintenance day. Oh yeah, and we took the rocks or used yeah, Bobcat maybe, as the rock hauler. Maybe I was down 
at like eight or nine. Yeah. But down at five PSI. Yeah. It was pretty comfy. I, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad <laughs> <laughs> driving around. Um, it and, felt loose to me. Yeah. I mean, but I, like I, I, felt, I, could, I think I felt like it moving on the tires. Oh, you interesting. Know? See, I'm used to that feeling because I air down so much on my tires, but I have bead locks so I can mm-hmm. do that. And I'm used to that. Like it felt perfectly normal to me. Yeah. Then the thing I really, really like about Bobcat is, uh, how much he weighs. He doesn't weigh. I, I would venture to guess he's a thousand to 1500 pounds lighter weight than the forerunner. Maybe. Um, and so he can just, you can bind up tires and he'll climb. Uh, mm-hmm. you don't, you don't have to worry about things breaking as much because you're not stressing out your components. Yeah. As much. Sure. So, yeah. so I was talking to, um, Amber, um, Turner Turner. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I wanted to say Bert de or whatever. Uh, but, yeah. That's um, her, uh, Instagram. Yeah. So I was talking to her and, uh, we were talking about, uh, six shooter knuckles or a fifth stud, um, because she's mm-hmm. installing her or hydro assist, right? Mm-hmm. Cause she's installing Toyota axles under her race car. Gotcha. And she was like, Oh, I don't really need to worry about it. You know, cause it's, this is only a, you know, 2000 pound, Mm-hmm. Samurai, mm-hmm. and I looked up what the curb weight or the uh, the gross vehicle weight of Bobcat is when it was stock uh-huh. but, and from you know from the factory. Yep. You want to guess what it is? I'm gonna guess twenty six hundred, twenty eight hundred on the nose, twenty six hundred, yeah. yeah. twenty six forty or something like that. Yep. Yeah, that's. I was shocked. I was on. I was mm-hmm. like, I sent it to her, and I was like, mine's only six hundred more pounds. Yeah. That's the great thing about mini trucks and why the Toyota mini truck platform works so damn well. It's a really lightweight rig with not a lot of frills and thrills. So you mm-hmm. can, you can go anywhere and you don't have enough power to break stuff. Yeah. As long, yeah, as, long as you have keep that four cylinder. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> and so my, uh, my curb weight rating of the forerunner, how much do you think it is? Uh, I think it's 35, 45, 45. Yep. Okay, so curb weight and gross vehicle weight are different. Oh, maybe it was the gross vehicle. That's what's on the inside of the door tag is 4,500 pounds from the okay. factory. Because, um, and I had, I looked this up too because I didn't know what it was. So I think curb weight is max load and weight of the vehicle. Yes, that sound that, uh, that like is, should be correct. With yeah. full fuel, somebody in there and weight and like how much you can put in the payload. Correct. So your payload rating plus your gross vehicle weight rating should equal your curb weight rating. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense because the the F one fifty's curb weight rating is sixteen thousand pounds. Yes. So I know that it But the gross vehicle weight of your of the F one fifty is not sixteen thousand no, pounds. It's six thousand, something yeah. I think, right down there. Yeah. So the gr- um the curb weight for my truck is, you know, 2,800 pounds. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's probably another thousand. So it's probably uh, 3,600 pounds. Yeah. Somewhere be my there. guess I'm around there. So, but yeah, so I thought that was, that was interesting because it is a, it is a light vehicle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, good. I'm glad that, um, I'm glad you chose would chose Bobcat off on one of those categories at least. No. Yeah, I totally would in terms of dependability and, um, needing to make sure I don't break anything. I would choose Bobcat over Kermit any day. Yeah. <laughs> um, now once I get the new axles under Kermit might be a different story, but <laughs> until then, like I'm still, I just, I feel like I'm, I'm walking and driving on eggshells um, with a three, four in there, 40 inch tires doing and wheeling the way I do and driving to and from the trails. I feel like I, I'm walking on eggshells with the axles that are under there mm, now. So got it. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, uh, shall we, uh, drop a hint about what's going to happen here, uh, next week? Yeah, let's do it, man. Cool. So really the reason that we all went down to halt, well, we, the reason we were always going to get together. Yes. Wheeling let's wine and whiskey together. Yeah. 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 Cruising to camp and uh-huh. snail trail four by four. Yep. And then Jason said, well, let's go to Hollister. Let's, go, I wheeling. Wanna, let's go wheeling since yeah. we're all getting together. Let's go to Hollister. Cause there's going to be a bunch of college kids there that I want to show my buggy off to or, yeah. or <laughs> the poly goats are there. And I was an alumni of them. Yeah. Uh, what, take it whatever way you want. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to be popular for once. Jason and his groupies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but so we are all getting together because uh, we did a, a Black Friday shopping special. Yeah. Holiday shopping. Holiday shopping yeah. special. Mm-hmm. Um, so we broke. Uh, 
we sat down and recorded after we went to Hollister Hills. We went back to Jason's place and we recorded an episode and we're going to break that episode up into three sections. Mm-hmm. Um, and one part's going to be released on Monday mm-hmm. with, uh, s- with snail us. trail four by four us. Uh-huh. The next part of that episode is going to be released on Tuesday on wheeling wine and whiskey. Mm-hmm. And then the third part is going to be released on Thursday on cruising to camp. Yeah, buddy. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yes, um, I do too. We did sit down and we recorded with everybody, all five of us about the Hollister trip and kind of our takeaways and the experiences. There's some other fun stories that Jimmy and I didn't touch on that uh, definitely get brought out uh, when we're all sitting down chatting. And I believe that is going to be coming out on uh, Tuesday with Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. Yes. So definitely listen to that one. If you want more info on, uh, on our trip to Hollister and, um, but yeah, I thought the, we kind of did the, the holiday gift episode uh, a little bit differently. It's a little bit differently organized than how we've done, how we've done it in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really liked the way it came out. I think that there was a lot of, um, variation I do too. in the ideas mm-hmm. that came out. So I thought it was really cool the way we did it. Um, everybody got, came up with some really neat ideas. Um, so definitely check it out. Uh, this is going to be the episode that you'll want to uh, have your spouses listen to. Mm-hmm. And uh, so check it out, listen to it. And if you hear anything good in there that you're looking to get this uh, holiday season, have your spouse listen to that too. So yeah. And yeah. then point it out like, Ooh, yeah. that would be really nice. Oh, that'd be cool. Yes. Oh, that's such a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so um, I think we'll, I'll explain sort of the breakdown of how it's going to go. Yeah. Go uh, for it. To some extent. So the our episode is going to be $50 and under. Mm-hmm. Um, then so we, each of us chose two objects or two um, gifts that I chose or that. I chose five. Yeah. <laughs> but some of us chose more than others. Um, okay. And so we, for the most part, everybody had two items. So there will be 10 items total plus some. Some bonus ones. Some bonus ones. And so ours was uh, $50 and under. And then the Wheeling Wine and Whiskies is going to be from 50 to $100. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Cruising to Camp is going to be the unlimited one. So yep. pretty much anything. I tried to keep my unlimited ones reasonable. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, some people did not. I tried to keep mine reasonable. There's a couple that are like, eh, you're probably not going to get that as a gift, but there's a couple in there. I think that are, I wasn't, gift ideas. I wasn't referring to you. Oh, I was referring to some of the other people in some our, of the- <laughs> that had some ideas that were unobtainable. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I agree. At least by mere motors like us. Well, when you have wheeling wine and whiskey money, sure, you know, I you know. can, you can shoot big here. Yeah, so. it's true. <laughs> but I think it, yeah, like Tyler was saying, I think it's going to be, you know, the, the, series that you want your significant other to sit down and listen to you with. Uh, it definitely will give them ideas mm-hmm. on what to get you uh, for the holiday seasons coming up. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so cool, man. Uh, pay attention to that one. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday next week. We'll have another uh, fun episode for you guys on Thursday. And then coming up is going to be 250 after that, which will be a lot of fun. So um, make sure you guys are tuning in. If you like everything that we are dishing out here on the podcast, uh, make sure you're telling all your buddies about it. Um, that's the number one way to, to help out the podcast is to get us into more ear holes. The more ear holes we get to get into, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> the the more fun things we get to do on the back end with uh, the listeners and everybody else out there, like uh, fun partnerships uh, with Gear Wrench and some giveaways and contests that Gear Wrench does. So. Uh, yeah, uh, tell your buddies, leave us a review. If you have not done that yet, uh, 350 is coming up here. And so if you want to make sure that you're in for the swag giveaway on 350, make sure you have a review in before 350. So I think that about does it, Jimmy. Um, do you have any final words for everybody out there? Snail trail swag. And with that, my friends, keep crawling. I heard this one the other day, but it, I didn't think it, it's it's funny, but it's not that funny. Okay. So I have this extremely old pencil. Okay. Yeah. It, I think it's actually from William Shakespeare, like back in the day, but he mm-hmm. used to chew on it a lot. So it's either a to be or a not to be.
A two B or not two B? Oh, because are they are the pencils two Bs or something? Pencils are two Bs. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I have a radio joke. Oh shit! <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready? Radio. Two satellites decided to get married. Oh, the wedding wasn't much, but the reception was incredible. That's funny. <laughs> I actually heard the same the same but opposite about Verizon. Oh, <laughs> the same was like my, you know, my mother-in-law got married to the CEO of Verizon. The wedding was amazing, but the reception was crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 